Hello and welcome to this continuing live code series on creating a website from scratch with Python, Django, and Wagtail CMS. We are porting a website from Drupal to Django and Wagtail. This is the, I guess you'd say original website, although it's been, uh, it's had previous lives including a static HTML, and it was a WordPress website for a while. So it's hopped through a few content management systems. I think maybe it was originally created with you know Dreamweaver or something like that. I'm not exactly sure. Uh, but each time, you know, either it's outgrown the way it's been developed or we've needed to get more uh, ability to control, more flexibility, so to speak. With the way things are designed and implemented, uh, and at this point in the site, we need to be able to, uh, I think, write some custom code. And uh, rather than write PHP, um, it was decided that we would port it over to a Python framework. So that said, we have been working so far on the community section of the website. We've got this community of events block ported over and the yearly meetings listing and nonprofit organizations listings. You can see here. And when I was just adding some dummy content, I noticed that on the contact uh, pages, we're missing a listing of the articles uh, authored by a given contact. So I think that was, it's a regression stemming from uh, pre like I think a couple of sessions ago, I rewrote this contact model to use the Wagtail page class. And I think in doing so, something in the template broke and I just didn't pick up on it until, until today. So let's see if we can fix this regression real quick. Let me first check that I've got the latest changes from master. Seems like we do, and we'll create a branch fix contact. Whoops, off to a good start with my typing. All right, so here's I think the problem essentially, this contact is a generic. Uh, entity that can be a person or an organization or these kind of meetings, various levels, and any of these can be responsible for publishing in all, uh, these magazine articles. So this is a you know a snippet of an article, but essentially articles are divided uh, by magazine issues, and issues are pu published bi-monthly. And they are also divided into departments and authors. So these are just different facets that would, uh, you can use to discover them. Now, for some reason, when I ported over this code, this article's helper is no longer working. So let's take a look why. Um, and this is most likely going to reside in the magazine app, models. And we're going to look for magazine article authors. I think the problem is this. This should be articles. Let me see if that fixes or for might need a migration. Let me see here actually. Magazine article summary. 
It looks like this is trying to render. Whoops, I had the debugger. F5 and it loaded up the debugger over here. Not what I was intending to do. If I hit F5 and refresh this, let me put in some dummy. If count, it should, so if this count exists, it should be displaying that. All right, I might need to use the debugger. But basically, why did that break the teaser? This magazine article summary with article. So let me see if I can comment this out for a second. I'll come back to it. Because I believe on the model definition, the related name is the relationship coming from the other end. Uh, let's see. So, for example, a department has some articles. So, depends on minute to many. To contact. Contact should have articles. And I might just need to migrate this. See what happens there. So need to run server. Okay. Article summary. From the contact, we shouldn't be rendering this template at all, man. Eh? It's kind of confusing. See if I comment this whole thing out. All right, there we go. So there is something going on. So it does see some articles. Cool. So it could be that for article and page articles all. I think all that's changed is that we're pointing directly to the article now. We don't have an intermediary table, so let's see if this works.
for article and page articles all. That should give me an object. Let's see, an article instance. Oh, I keep in the a five. Wait for this. Actually, let's try that. Yeah. So it definitely has an article object. Okay. Cool. So we'll just have to take a look at our magazine article summary. Passing the article and make sure that it's uh, getting the data it expects. This summary is used in multiple places. We wanted to share the code instead of duplicating in each of these places. So. It's working here, but on the front page, but not on this other page. So I wonder what's different about the context about how it's passed in there. This should be a page instance. If we open up magazine, article, summary. There we go, I just didn't need the width. I think it, it's gonna inherit the context here. That was a little bit kind of sketch, but uh, okay. Seems to be working now. Hmm. All right, we'll just commit those. Changes. Cool, now we can move on. To the new feature, merge this code. We're still prototyping the website, so I'm not kind of worried about this um, dependency being outdated. Okay, so that fixed. Um, the section of the site I decided I'd kind of focus in on, I have two main two main paths I could go today. I might do both. One, we have an image here uh, next to the introductory text. I was thinking for consistency, it might be nice to create a card with an image header, intro text, and maybe some optional links, sort of uh, in the spirit of the way this is laid out, but maybe a little bit more, um, maybe clean or constrained design. So this would be the intro text. We might drop the header, leave the intro, and an image. And the intro could have some arbitrary HTML links in there too. So it could be just focusing in on the image. That wasn't too difficult once it, once I worked it out. It wasn't too many lines of code. Like 
more, more or less five lines of code in a new um, field on the model. The other extra, uh, exercise we can do today is um, kind of adding these two extra panels here. And I think the commonality between these two panels is that they are links and they have a title and an intro. So I'm just HTML, arbitrary HTML, more or less. And so they can be both treated as the sort of same um, base content type, and maybe using a field to classify them as one being online worship type, one being sort of a directory, community directory. Because these are all listings of Quaker organizations, a map. And so that would allow me to split out the pages I would create then, let me think here. Basically, I would create index pages. Hmm. So online worship index page would have an intro text and then a listing of these. Same with friends everywhere. And in general, I've got my IT kind of um, first get the basic functionality implemented, but uh, then try to do it in a way that's reusable because there's so many of these patterns we're, we're applying in multiple sections, like these title, intro, image, title, intro, image, title, intro, image. I mean, these could be just some sort of a generic that we apply multiple times and let the editor put in the content and choose the page ordering and things like that. Because right now I'm kind of getting more hard coding than I would like in terms of the layout. Um, but that's where I'm at. So let's go ahead and uh, try this image real quick. I'll be right back. So to do that, we'll take a quick look at the model for the community page. And it was actually pretty easy. Wagtail comes with a built-in field for this called uh, or it's actually a particularly a, a uh, built-in, not collection, but a table and some functionality around images. Into intro, intro. Intro image. So I'm just using this introductory text in all these sections. And Wagtail has this really cool thing called a stream field. And I think once I get more comfortable with stream fields, uh, this page is essentially a stream field. These are would be stream field elements that I could repeat. Um, right now, this is very bespoke code, or very specific to, and kind of inflexible in that manner. But our goal is just to get the the website ported over to the new format um, and make some slight improvements along the way. Okay, so we've added this foreign key to the Wagtails images collection. Uh, we'll go ahead and make that migration. We'll migrate it. And then if I edit this page, Oh, uh, yes, I have to add the, uh, let's do a multi-field panel. Really quick, the multi-field panel allows you to group, oops, I'm not running. Uh, 
allows you to group fields together, uh, sometimes collapsible. So for events, we've got them grouped with intro and image. And we have this intro text I could group as intro and image. This is a list, so these we call it element. And I believe that when you're changing the layout of panels, you don't have to run migrations. It should just be able to refresh. All right, so we got an intro text and an intro image. Great, great. So save image. Upload and all of this comes out of the box with Wagtail. You know, doing the modal dialogue and everything for us, which is really helpful. Um, the only other thing we'll need to do, and this might be a short session because I'm not sure if I'm going to have to go uh, run an errand real quick, but let's get this uh, template in place. Sorry, the community templates are here. Where are we? Community templates, community page. I hope I can just do a copy and paste real quick. And it's right up here. It's essentially this. This div here. Right after the page title. And then this should be the page intro rich text. Let's just give it a little spacing for readability. space we don't need a call to action here yet let's just keep it simple and actually we do have this welcome text so I'll just preserve that it might be nice to make that editable any text on the page I think the editor might want to make an edit to so we have the page title up there which is community um, intro image. It's a fluid image. I can't use uh, white space. I can't uh, put new lines or line breaks in this tag. So I'm going to leave it like that. But now I believe if we go see the live page, we'll have some errors or it's not quite working yet. Page intro image. So that's there. It's in a card. Use just a little spacing underneath it. Image page intro image fill. Check my model. Save it. Paste. Rounded. You know what I did? Uh, I believe I just forgot to save the image. I've done this before. No, it's actually there. It's there. No, shoot. <laughs> I uploaded it, but I didn't actually attach it to the article. You have to sit, you have to publish the article after you do that. It doesn't take effect. That's the second time I've done that. Pretty simple mistake. There we go. And now I think it uh, looks good. I would like to balance it out though. Looks like leaning to the left a lot. These images are very content heavy. So maybe, and I'm not a designer, so I'm trying not to spend a whole bunch of time on this stuff. But if there's something that's simple to change, if it just works, then I'll, I'll try it out. But I think that's an all right change. All right, cool. And maybe it can lean both to the left. But I think this one, it flows. You read the content, you see the picture, then you can maybe 
follow the headers down. Hmm. So let's go ahead and commit these, and I believe I'll just uh, call this session good, and I might do another stream here in a couple of hours. So if anyone's still around, you can check it out. I guess all of these can really just cool beans well that's 25 minutes mainly just explaining a few things making a couple of mistakes but get the changes out the door um, so yeah when I continue it'll be on this lower section where we're going to be putting together the community resources I might uh, eventually get to the stream field generic uh, type of thing but at the very least we'll put a, um, a static field of Western friend connect with a you know right or left aligned image like we did here keep the the page content fluid. Okay, well, thank you very much for watching and uh, have a great day.